Welcome back everybody. In today's video, we have Press NH Now being found guilty of littering. Yup, it's a very small fine, but it's still a win. Now this guy is making a complete farce out of the whole process. He's actively trying to get another ticket so he can make another video in six months. This guy is a complete leech on society. And he's just proving once again that he is the biggest man child on YouTube. With that out of the way, enjoy the video. What's going on, everyone? This is Press NH Now. Donations are greatly appreciated. They do help me continue my activism in and around the New England area. Donations are greatly appreciated, guys. They do help me continue my activism in and around the New England states. Um, Shut up. We're going to continue our little game that we uh, played on the side of the road. Back when I'll show you some clips of it. Stay please, I'm the corner by the way. Hey, no, me too. Throw cigarettes out the window. I mean, well, you don't have probable cause for me, then. Oh, it's fine. fine. There's a cigarette was thrown out your vehicle. Not mine. That was a cherry. Let me ask you if I throw this out right now, what are you going to do? Uh, write you a ticket. There you go, write me a ticket. Alright, license registration, man. Nope. License, please. Nope. Call a supervisor. Please. Here's my cigarette. Do you have any questions regarding that? Yeah, uh, what if I throw this one out? You're going to give me another one? I'm not going to play the game online, man. Oh, I will. I don't know, what do you think? I should throw this one out too? Uh -huh. See what he says. What if I throw the cigarette out of La Placa? I'll just write another ticket. There you go. Alrighty. I'll do this whole night, La Placa. That's fine. You want to pick it up, man? Nope. Alright. Off, oh, you pick it up. We're here in front of the courthouse. And uh, we're taking uh, this littering tickets to trial. As we all should. The process is the punishment everyone and i suggest everyone uh fight the system here even if you're uh, guilty or not you la placa huh? are you la placa no sir oh okay what's your name i'm not going to answer that question no. yeah can i ask what you're doing here huh? are you here for court you're here for coffee yes, you're sir. just sitting around uh, wasting tax dollars uh, we'll talk to you later. are you on break what's your name i'm going to ask him the same question i asked la placa that if I uh, take this cigarette and I throw it on the ground, what is he gonna do? Let me ask you, if I throw this out right now, what are you gonna do? Uh, write you a ticket. So we'll just play this game with this troop instead, unless I see the placa. Hey, sir. Hey, I got a question. Can I have your name and badge number? Sure. It's Trooper Provenzo. My badge number is 132. Awesome. I have a question for you. Um, do you, are you aware of who La Placa is? Yes. You do? Okay, so I have a question for you since he's not here. If I take this cigarette, right, and I throw it on the ground, what would you do? I'd either give you a warning or a ticket for Okay, well, I'm going to do that right now. Do you mind picking it up? No, I don't. Do I do, I do mind. Do I do mind. That is and you could I don't understand that, actually. And you could get a ticket for that. Can you explain that to me, sir? You're going to take care of it later, like La Placa did? Do you mind picking up the cigarette, sir? Yeah, let's do it again. I don't know if he gave me my warning or not. Is that my warning? So as you guys can see, it's obviously a game to him. He's being upfront about it. He just wants to cost the taxpayers as much money as possible while committing crimes because he knows he can throw five cigarettes and get a bunch of tickets and he will still make a lot more money on his YouTube video than the fine could possibly be. This is the definition of a fraud and a leech on society. He wants to cost us the taxpayers so that he can line his pockets all while littering. Anyways, I don't expect any different from someone that smokes in a closed environment in his car right next to his pregnant girlfriend. And guys, I just want to let you know, I usually, uh, I do not litter uh, with my cigarettes. I either put them in my pocket or uh, and then throw them in the trash. Uh, this is just uh, being defiant um, with their petty, uh, petty crimes for pulling people over like you saw in the video in the past.
And uh, I do have cord hair actually for the same thing. The process is the punishment, and uh, we're dealing with that today. Sir, you want to pick up that cigarette for me, please? No. Have I been given a warning for littering? No. I have not. No. So if I take this cigarette right here and I throw it on the ground, what are you going to do about that? I'll probably just do a warrant for that one and that one. Okay, so if I throw another one on the ground. Here, no, here. Here. Here's another one. Here. Here's another one. I just lit it again, buddy. What are you going to do now? That's three. Nothing, right? Here, here's another one. Here's another littering. Okay. You want to give me a ticket? Is that two warnings, three warnings, or four? How about another one, Ellis? Huh? Here's another one. I'm proving a point. That's what I'm doing here, Ellis. Okay, what's your, what's Where's La Placa? You La Placa? Hey, you gonna give me another ticket? What's your, what's your point? My, My point? point? His point is that he's an absolute man-child with nothing better to do than to commit petty crimes in the effort of getting another trial and being able to make another 800 bucks off his video. That's the entire point. He found a loophole where you can actually commit crimes on YouTube and get paid for it. However, it's just a matter of time before he gets the wrong charge like DMA and then he's forced to get a job and that will absolutely destroy him. Imagine being used to just commit crimes, walk around, act like an idiot and get paid and now you're forced to actually get a job. He won't know what to do. Is that I'm being defiant okay. and there's no victim in this case. Okay. I don't even know what we're doing here. All you're doing is stealing my money okay. and I'm pissed off about it. All right. I don't mind being a court. You know that, Ellis. Absolutely. All right. Yep. So on that matter, here's another one. Yeah. So it's okay for you to. It is now. Okay. Yeah. And if you'd like to pick those up, you can do so. Unless we want to proceed. Oh, we're going to proceed. We're going to proceed, but so I'm not going to get any more warnings or tickets for that. I didn't say that. Is anybody here? You have what? Four law enforcement officers here. Nobody's going to give me a ticket, right? But you're willing to give me a ticket on the side of the road, right? No, don't tell me I have to de-escalate. I can do what I want. I'm going into the courtroom in a minute. We have court in five minutes. Relax, Ellis. You know I have media registration forms. Yeah. All of you. Let's get this process over with so you can take my money and food out of my kid's mouth. I don't want to hit from any of you. Go pick up my cigarettes. Because I'm not. If you want to give me a ticket, we'll come back in six months. Squat session? It's not? Okay. Where are you going? Yeah. Yep. Cool. So you need to shut that off. I'm going to go in and record. Do you have permission from the judge? I don't know. Did you ask him? Did I have you? registration forms. Did you I'm registered him? media. He doesn't but, have a problem with it. Who is this, sweetheart? But you have to have prior permission. I do. I have called a registration form. No. You it's don't a media have, registration form. You don't have prior permission today. That is, no, it's notice. It's notice. It's notice. Can we proceed, please, and get this over with? You don't. Well, I'll ask the judge if I could record in there, and then we'll go from there. There you go. Does that subside you? We'll find out before, won't Let's we? go. Find out before. I already gave you my notice, and I'm media registered. You promised me you would not cause a problem. No, you're causing court. a problem right now. No, no. No, no. Yeah, yeah. You, you are. You promised me. No, I don't make promises, okay? 
Now, are you going against your word? I'm, sure, if that's how you want to put it. Are you putting words in my mouth? No, you. I never right made you a promise. No, I never a made you a promise. Stop. Stop. Stop causing a disturbance, there. please. Because you're causing a disturbance. You're you causing a disturbance, sir. I'm not going to answer any more questions. Causing a disturbance. You're disturbing my peace. Yeah, you guys need to learn how to de-escalate anyway. Proud to serve that for you. I'll train you. <laughs> so four officers saw me throw a cigarette outside and you're not gonna give me a ticket. We didn't hmm. say that. I didn't say that. I said Incredible. I'm not going to do it right now. All right. Well, I'm glad that the officers aren't giving him a ticket because in this case, it's definitely not worth it. He's going to make easily a thousand bucks off his video for a $60 ticket. It's bad enough that it happened once. So society just has to pay the price for this frauditor because that's just what frauditors are an absolute leech on society. They litter everywhere and then they waste public resources by pleading not guilty even though we know they're guilty and then they flip the bill on us. That's just what they are. Don't do it right now. I'll see you in six months I'll waste more. Tax dollars. It's all right. You know this case has cost more already? Literally more than those two tickets that you gave me? It's ridiculous. Between the prosecutor, the judge, and you being here, it's already cost the state, what, a few hundred dollars if not more? Crazy, crazy. I'm already registered with the media with uh, the AOC, just to put you guys on notice. It's prior notice, not prior permission. Get that I find right. It amazing, Mark. That Sorry. I said I find it amazing that the last time we dealt with each other. Uh huh. You were a gentleman. Yep. We were able to talk. Yep, but this is different. Okay. This is different. Because you're on video. It's the only reason. What do you mean? Because I'm on video. I'm not on video. You're on video. Yeah. But you're going to. You got a problem with that? No, absolutely not. Well, obviously, the courts have a problem here. No. Even though they know that I'm already registered with the media from the AOC, and they still have a fucking problem with it, like usual. But I'm here to change that. Okay. And I'm willing to take an arrest on it too, and then fight that in the Supreme Court with their own rules, which is unconstitutional. So if you really want to get down to it, and you already stole my money last time, $67 out of my kid's mouth. I appreciate that. I hope you feel good about it. I don't know who the victim here is, mm -hmm. but there is none, unless it's the state of New Hampshire who is not a person, it's not an entity, it's not a business. I don't get what the point of there is. The last time we were here was a speeding ticket. Yep. And now we're here for this. Okay. Sweetheart never has an issue with me recording in there. And they have to give another person the objection in order for me to stop. And it's got to be under the court rules in order for, to do so. Like privacy, juveniles, such like that. There is none here. Maybe it's transparency. I think it might be transparency. What do you say? He said he did not have a conversation with you, and it needs to be in writing. It's I'm registered already. It's that's on file. Not, that's not in writing for the Supreme Court order. It is. It's it's registered. I'm registered with the media. Call the AOC. I am registered. Right. You're a news organization. You're a reporter. You're a journalist. But yet you admit to committing crimes in front of cops to prove a point that it's all a little game to you. That is not being a journalist. No journalist would be treated seriously if that's what they did. And that's why all frauditors are a complete joke. They don't even know what journalism is registered but you don't have written permission from the presiding judge so get it from him i don't need to you do no i don't and i'm not so let's go into court i'll ask the judge and we'll see what he says prohibited from photographing recording audio camera cell phone video or any other media broadcasting transmitting or televising in the lobby or other non-courtroom area yep i'm trying to go into the courtroom for my hearing 
and I am recording the public officials in the course of their duties at the moment who are trying to investigate me for possibly littering. Give me one second, Your Honor. Yeah, me too. What if I throw the cigarette out of the placa? I'll just write another ticket. There you go. Alrighty. You know that I really just want to hear what people have to say. But another part of my role, as you also know. Your what? Role. Role, yeah. As you also know. Of course. Is to enforce um, the court rules yep. and the Supreme Court orders as I know them to be. So come on. Yeah. Um, I, noticed was, that, I noticed that you're recording. Yeah, I just want to inform you. Um, I am registered with AOC as media. I do have a registration form. Can I see uh, that? I don't have a copy on me. I, I really don't. I've handed them out to like three or four different courts. Okay. Um, I can swear under oath that I am. Um, I can promise you that. That's as far as I can do with any. Uh, some, some all I know. All I know is that when um, I think that uh, Cindy from Claremont had said that they tried to accept that from you in that court, and it wasn't the. Authorized forms. So yes. Here's, so here's uh -huh. what I have a copy of my phone. I can show you that. You and I know each other well enough to know how this is going to work. So yeah. I'm going to tell you what the rules are. I'm going to tell you to follow the rules, and if you don't follow the rules, is uh, it the same let, court? Let, let me finish. I don't want to hear the rules of the court. I already know. I already understand the rule. This is very simple. Mr. I, I, I understand. Going to, I understand the rules. I'm going to take a recess until he's ready to listen. Okay. I'm not going to have him talk. All right. All right. Let's delay this even more. It's fine with me. I don't want to hear the rules. I know the rules. Um, we're going to try this one more time. And I, and I, I, it, it's not whether or not you want to hear me explain the rules. It's a, my, in order for me to be fair to you and explain to you what's in my mind and why I'm making my decisions, I need to be able to talk. And we have a very good system for working out disputes if people are able to talk. But, I'm trying to but when you're interrupting me and when I'm trying to speak, it makes it impossible for me to create my record. And here, let me also point this out to you. If you have an issue with the rules that I need to explain to you, you have the only way for you, the only way for you to actually challenge them in a meaningful way is, as you know, by going to the Supreme Court. And the only way I can make a record is by talking without you interrupting. So if you would like to have the opportunity to make a meaningful change in ways that you think are important, then you need to be able to challenge them with the Supreme Court. So I'm going to make a record for you. And then you can say you can disagree. I'm going to challenge her. I know the court. So the judge gave him a clear avenue to make meaningful change if he really wants to record in courtrooms and he has to go to the Supreme Court. But of course, this idiot isn't interesting in making meaningful changes. All he wants to do is make meaningful changes to his bank account, which right now he is succeeding at doing. But that's about to stop in the next couple months because he has several serious trials he has for call flooding. And there's also the loitering near inmates that will happen in Georgia. Now, I need to follow up on that case. I haven't heard from it which in this case, that means he's probably trying to hide some really bad news. It's the Supreme Court rules. I follow those rules. I've filed myself with the AOC for registered media. That's it. I just don't have any evidence. I can give you, can I show you a copy of it? Sure. It's on my phone. That's all I have for you. Go ahead. Okay. Are you ready to proceed? We are, Your Honor. Okay. Um, any questions or concerns before we get going? Or uh, should we get underway with the witness? Um, yeah, I'd like to um, have this case dismissed based on the fact that uh, the state does not have a victim to claim. Um, and uh, I don't know who, who the victim here is. Um, the state cannot be a victim of a, uh, of a crime um, or civil penalty. I don't care. The other thing is that um, as the prejudice most based on the simple fact that, uh, that there's no injury. There's, there's no party to, to complain here except for the state. Uh, there's no no relief, you know, requesting that this behavior changes. I mean, money taken out of my pocket is not going to change anybody's behavior, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. If I want to, if I want to go outside and deliver ten cigarettes, I will. If I take this cigarette right here and I throw it on the ground, what are you going to do about that? How about another one, Ellis? Huh? Here's another one. Okay. Um, do you want to say anything? Nope. Okay. Uh, the, 
defendant has not pointed to any rule of law, case law, statutory law, or anything that would support the premise that there has to be a named victim in order to proceed with a criminal charge, especially, or in this case, not even a criminal charge, a non-criminal violation of the Defense of the Literary. So the motion to dismiss is denied based on those two bases, and we'll get underway with our witnesses. So you can have a seat, Mr. Manchin. And Trooper, could you please call the first witness? Okay, we call Trooper LaPlaca to the stand. Trooper, do you swear that any testimony you provide today in the course of this hearing is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. Okay, you can sit down. Mr. Ellis, go ahead. Trooper, could you state your name, spell your last name for the court? My name is Anthony LaPlaca, last name capital L, A, capital P, L, A, C, A. And how are you employed? Employed by the State Police in New Hampshire. I was hired in August of 2019, graduated the 180th Academy in December, and began on FTO next year. During that training, did you receive instruction in both criminal and motor vehicle law? Yes, sir. And you said you graduated from that academy? Yes, sir. And what's your assignment at this point? I'm assigned to Troop C, Sullivan County Patrol. So drawing your attention to December 20th of 2022, can you tell the court where you were? I was performing stationary patrol on Elm Street in the town of Newport. Okay. And approximately 8 p.m., anything unusual catch your attention? While performing stationary patrol, I observed a vehicle that I believed to be traveling faster than the posted speed limit of 35. So I exited where I was stationary, and I pursued after the vehicle. Obviously, I could not get a reading on the vehicle because he was stopped at the stop sign before turning right westbound onto John Stark. Okay. Anything unusual catch your attention after that? What I found that was interesting is that I can appreciate that they try to limit the cost to the taxpayers. As you can see, there is no prosecutor present. The person that's asking the questions is, I believe, a sheriff or a bailiff. And that's one good strategy to offset the cost that Mark Manchild is absolutely wasting right now. Yes, I was following the vehicle westbound John Stark Highway in the town of Newport. I observed a cigarette that was thrown from the vehicle. Okay, you said it was on John Stark Highway? Yes, sir. Your Honor, the state would ask the court to take judicial notice that John Stark Highway in Newport is a public road. Any issue with that, Mr. Manchin? What? Do you contest that it's a public road? No. Okay, so no. After seeing, all right, you said you saw a cigarette come out of the vehicle. Can you describe what happened when that cigarette came out? While I was behind the vehicle, I should establish that there was no vehicles traveling eastbound or there's no vehicles in front of the other vehicle. It was just that vehicle. I observed about five times the cigarette hit the pavement and each time sparks flew. Okay. You take action? I did. I conducted a motor vehicle stop. I activated my emergency lights, 360, and conducted a traffic stop. Now, did that vehicle pull over immediately? No. How far did the vehicle go? What actions did it take? So I observed the vehicle turn on its emergency four ways, and I observed that the vehicle was very slow to stop and proceeded on for, I'm not sure the amount of time, but it was longer than it would take under normal circumstances. It just took some time before he pulled over completely and came to a stop. Okay. But he did stop? Yes, sir. Did you make contact with the driver? I did, sir. Did you recognize the driver? I do. He's right there, Your Honor. Can you? Mark. Okay. Let the record reflect, Your Honor, that the troopers identified the defendant as the driver of the vehicle. Well, he hasn't done anything to describe the defendant, so at this time he has not done that. Okay. Can you describe what the person is wearing? Yes. He's wearing a T-shirt. He has tattoos on his arm. He's sitting in that seat. Let the record reflect he has identified Mr. Manchin? I think he has not. Any objection, Mr. Manchin? No. Okay. This is a charade. Did you have a conversation with the driver? I did. As I approached, I identified myself as state police that I was reporting and requested the license registration. 
I advise the reason to stop was that somebody threw a cigarette out the window. And what was his response to that? At that time, he was had a cigarette in his hand, and he proceeded to put the cigarette out, excuse me, the cigarette out, and advised that this was his probable cause that he did not throw a cigarette out the window. Okay. Any other conversation you had with him? Um, the gist of the conversation was me requesting his license registration and me refusing based on his belief that he had probable cause. Please, please, please. No. Call a supervisor. Please. That he did not throw a cigarette out the window. He, uh, the passenger, well, there was a female passenger, um, he told me to get her ID for, for some reason. Okay. So what did you do after he refused to give you his identification? So after going back and forth with him about the license, um, I was able to identify him through previous professional contact as Mark, which I advised him, like, Mark, let me have your license, please. And he refused to give me the license. By then, after a few rounds of that, he requested a supervisor under me. Okay. You returned to your cruiser? I did. And what did you do? I contacted Sergeant Sanctuary, who was the on duty supervisor at this time, I advised him of the stop, and what was happening, and he advised that he was currently in Keene, I believe, in Cheshire, about 40 minutes away. Okay. Did you return and explain that to uh... I did. And what was his response? His response said that I was illegally detaining him, uh, that he wanted to leave, and he would not wait for the supervisor. Okay. Of course he wanted a supervisor. Why am I not surprised? Even though he voluntarily littered right in front of the officer's face, he would request a supervisor to waste even more resources. Now, a supervisor could be busy attending to important stuff, but no, they have to come and attend to the man-child's feelings. Anything else unusual happen? Uh, yes. Um, after going back and forth with him, I advised him not to litter throw cigarettes out the window and then he produced a, a cigarette that was lit and asked me what's going to happen if i throw the cigarette out the window what if i throw the cigarette out of the placa i'll just write another ticket there you go all right i advised him that i'll write him a ticket and then he threw it right in the middle of the road um did mr uh mention that you were being recorded also yes the first time you went up, or? The, the, when I first approached him on the traffic stop, he did. I advised that I was recording, yeah. and then he advised that he was recording as well. Okay. So what did you do after he threw the second cigarette out on the ground? Well, the second cigarette when he threw out, I asked him to get it. He said no. So once I received his license registration, I made sure nobody's coming in the roadway and picked up the cigarette to be disposed properly at a later time, and then returned to my cruiser and I drafted a uh, ticket for the room. Okay. And when you went back up to issue that ticket, then what happened? Once I gave him the ticket, um, he again produced a cigarette and said, what's going to happen if I throw the cigarette? I advise I write him another ticket. So he proceeded to throw the ticket, or excuse me, the cigarette back onto the roadway. Another cigarette, I should say. And at that time, I went back to my, I, first I picked the cigarette out of the road, then I went back to my cruiser and prepared another ticket. Okay. Objection, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Um, but let's say, uh, be known that um, he did not produce a second, uh, a second ticket on the site of the uh, traffic violation stop. Um, it was about six or so. He so hadn't months. said that he had it. No. He said he wrote a second ticket. Well, well, let's, just, let's just say it's not a, a legal objection. It sounds like you have some dispute over the facts as to what he exactly he did. So yes. you can reserve that argument to us. Um, cross-examination if you choose to ask him about that. Go ahead, Trooper. So, Trooper, where you were, um, have you ever had problems with uh, issuing tickets from that location? Yes, my the second time that I went to get another ticket for him, my printer was malfunctioning, it was not printing. So that's when I approached him, I advised that I was sending it through the mail. There's an option we are allowed to do where we can send a certified copy through the mail. If you're unable to print out a, an actual hard copy ticket? Yes. And who sends, who usually sends that to the defendant? The DMV. DMV. <coughs> so did you issue him one ticket that night? I issued two in total. Okay. Did, you, did you give him one or both issued through DMV? 
I gave him one hard copy, then my uh, printer experienced issues, so I gave him one through certified mail. Okay. Any other conversation you had with the defendant before he left? Uh, the defendant was basically established that he could do this all night, and that he would continue to do so. So I essentially, after the second ticket, I ended contact once my vehicle. Um, he remained in his vehicle parked and wouldn't leave, so at that time I left. I left him on the side of the road. And that ended your contact with the, the defendant? Yes. No further questions. Right. Any questions for Mr. Oblaka? charges um, or civil violations, I'd like the state to at least uh, drop one and um, either find me guilty of the other or dismiss both. That's, that, that's my way. All right, everyone. So as you saw in there, I was found guilty of uh, two littering tickets uh, in which I will be paying within seven days. So Press NH now decided to cut the video short so we don't actually hear the verdict being read out. I'm sure that the judge blasted him. But as usual, the First Amendment auditors don't really like transparency, so he didn't bother to include that part. Anyways, this guy will get what's coming to him. He has multiple cases that are pending that are a lot more serious than this. And you best believe that once they happen, I will keep you updated. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one. I live here.